everyone, time for another bedtime story. Um, I borrowed Amelia's teddy this time. So I've chosen Rhinos Don't Eat Pancakes by Anna Kemp and Sarah Ogilvy. Daisy was eating her breakfast when a big purple rhino strolled into the kitchen. That's right, a big purple rhino. It was as big as a bus and as purple as a plum. It was also a bit peckish, so it took a chomp out of Daisy's pancake and went upstairs. Mum, Mum, called Daisy. There's a big... Oh, tell your dad, said Mum. He'll catch it and put... He'll catch it in a mug and throw it out the window. Dad, Dad, said Daisy. There's a big, there's a huge, shh, said Dad. The spider can wait. It's not a spider, Daisy shouted. It's a big purple rhinoceros. But as usual, nobody listened. Meanwhile, the rhino made himself right at home. Daisy saw him in the hall glimpsed him in the garden. She spied him in the bathroom and surprised him on the loo. But every time she tried to tell her parents, they'd say, shh, Daisy, can't you see we're busy? Daisy's parents were busy all week, so Daisy began to talk to the rhino instead. Soon they became good friends. They played hoopla and made pizza together. And the rhino tickled Daisy until she thought she'd burst. But Daisy's parents still didn't notice. Until the pancakes ran out. Who ate all the pancakes? yelled Dad, looking straight at Daisy. It was the rhino, said Daisy. Rhinos don't eat pancakes, said Dad. Well, this one does, cried Daisy. I saw him in the kitchen. A rhino, said Mum. In the kitchen, said Dad. Yes, yeah, said Daisy, exactly. Mum and Dad roared with laughter. Whatever next, they hooted. A shark in the toilet, a polar bear in the fridge. There he is, look, Daisy yelled. But Mum and Dad were so busy laughing they didn't even notice. Come on, Rhino, said Daisy. I've had enough of this. The rhino tickled Daisy with his horn, but she was far too glum to giggle. Mum and Dad never listen, she sighed. They're always a million miles away. Oh, the rhino sighed deeply through his big purple nostrils. Oh, I'm sorry, rhino, said Daisy. Your family are a million miles away too, aren't they? The rhino nodded and a lilac tear rolled down his cheek. Poor rhino. That night, Daisy sat up, thinking of ways to get the rhino back home to his family. He was too heavy for a hot air balloon and too big for Daisy's rubber dinghy. She thought about lending him her bike, but the helmet would just never fit. The next morning, Mum and Dad had a surprise. We're taking you to the zoo, said Mum, so you can see a real rhino. What do you think of that, grinned Dad? Daisy thought it was a silly idea when there was an already a perfectly good rhino sitting on the sofa. But she didn't say so. What was the point? Nobody would listen. At the zoo, Daisy saw yellow giraffes, bright red parrots, orange and black tigers and grass green snakes. But she couldn't help thinking about her poor purple rhino. Hurry up, Daisy, said Mum. The rhinos are this way. But what was this? Missing, big purple rhino, likes pancakes. If found, please call the zoo. Oh, <gasps> cripes, gasped Mum. Well, that explains their pancakes, gasped Dad. Mum, Dad and Daisy rushed back home and guess what they saw when they got there? That's right, the biggest purplest rhinoceros in town. What did I tell you? Daisy said, grinning from ear to ear. I'm phoning the zoo, said Mum. The rhino looked startled. No, said Daisy, not the zoo. He needs to get back to his family. They're a million miles away. 
Well, we'd better get a move on, said Dad. The next flight to a million miles away leaves this afternoon. The rhino packed his suitcase while Daisy found his hat. Then they all pushed his big purple bottom into the back of the car. And they drove to the airport. I'll miss you, said Daisy, as the rhino boarded the plane. The rhino gave her a big purple hug. He'd miss her too. Back home, Daisy began to feel lonely again. Who would listen to her now? But little did she realise everything was about to change. Tell us all about the rhino, Daisy, said Mum. Yes, said Dad. Tell us about that big purple pancake-eating rhino. So Daisy told them about the hoopla and the pizza and the tickles and guess what? They listened and listened until she'd completely run out of words. It was brilliant. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us, asked Mum, as she took Daisy into bed that night. Daisy looked out onto the landing. Mm. No, that's all for now, said Daisy, smiling. Night, night. The pink polar bear would have to wait until tomorrow. And that's the end of tonight's story. Hope you're all okay. Thinking about you all. Take care. Night, night.